That was Jesus is All the World to Me by Sister Anne Marie Hudley Simmons. Greetings. I am Elder Marcia Henry Raymond, and I worship in Springfield Gardens Presbyterian Church. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus declared, where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there in the midst of them. That is Matthew 18, verse 20. And as I joyfully greet you on this Lord's Day, I proclaim to the universe that we have gathered as one body in the name of Jesus Christ to worship, praise, and glorify our God. So, good morning again, all children of God, especially the saints of the Presbyterian Church of St. Albans, Springfield Gardens Presbyterian Church, Hollis Presbyterian Church, through Memorial Presbyterian Church, Westminster Presbyterian Church in Cedar Manor, First Presbyterian Church in Far Rockaway, First Presbyterian Church in Jamaica, and Dunton Presbyterian Church. At this time, we welcome you into this sacred space, again in the name of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, Savior, and Lord. Please join us in the hymn of praise. He Lives, by Sister Hudley Simmons and Chaplain Charles Powell. <laughs> to the time of prayer. Let us pray. Most gracious Savior, we greet you with all humility and awe. Your light is in all things. Your love reaches out to all human beings. Allow us to recognize you in all of your holy names and forms. Father, may your truth reach far and wide eliminating 
and making all of humanity as one single family. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that we are impatient, too full of pride, and more apt to follow our own plans rather than your divine plan. Father, forgive us. Help us to see that you know what is best for us. Precious, resurrected Savior, we thank you for the assurance that our sin is forgiven and our transgressions pardoned. Thank you for the unshakable truth. If we wait and hope in you, our strength will be renewed. In Jesus Christ, we thank you. Amen. The Hymn of Preparation, Great is Thy Faithfulness, sung by Chaplain Charles Powell. Thou hast been, thou fallest. 
Prayer for all peoples and churches, lifted by Elder Sunday Olugu. Good morning. I'm Elder Sunday from Troop Memorial Presbyterian Church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, Father, O oh God, we thank you. We worship you, we bless your name. Father, we thank you for this great day, this day that you have made, this day that you have given us, a bright new day, a day we cannot buy or purchase with money. We cannot buy with silver nor gold, but the day that you have given us freely, according to your mercy. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jehovah Jireh. We thank you, Jehovah El Shaddai. We thank you, Jehovah Nisi. We thank you, great Ebenezer, Alpha and Omega. There is none like you. We worship you this morning, O oh God. We thank you, Father God, for waking us up, for giving us life, life in abundance. Let your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. We thank you this day, O oh Lord, for bringing us, even in our various homes, to worship you. Father, we must worship you. No matter the circumstance, no matter the situation, no matter the virus, no matter the things that happen around us, if we have life, we have to praise your name. So, Father, this morning, your church had this take this opportunity, O oh God, to bless your name. Receive all glory. Receive all adoration. Receive all thanksgiving. Let your name alone be glorified in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. As we thank you, O oh God, we come before you because we know we have no power. We know we have no power of our own. So we come to you. As we come, we surrender our lives. We know in many ways, O oh God, we have sinned against you. Sometimes by the things we hear, sometimes by the things we say, sometimes by the things we do, we have sinned against you. Sometimes where we lay our footsteps, Father, this morning, as a church, we pray for your forgiving power. Have mercy upon your church. Have mercy upon us, O oh God, as we call upon your name, according to our needs, we come before you. Father, please, touch us. Touch every member of these churches, O oh God. Every member of these churches that has come together, put their minds together, walk together to continue to honor your word, no matter what situation we are facing, but these churches that come together to worship you, we lift them up, O oh God, unto your throne of mercy. We lift up Presbyterian Church of St. Albans. We lift up Springfield Gardens Presbyterian Church. We lift unto you Westminster Presbyterian Church in Cedar Manor. We lift up unto you, O oh God, Hollis Presbyterian Church. We lift up unto you, O oh God, First Presbyterian Church of Farakaway. We lift unto you, O oh God, Troop Memorial Presbyterian Church. We lift unto you, O oh God, Dunton Presbyterian Church. O oh Father God, as we lift these churches unto you, we are bringing our members, those that whatever concern them, concern us, O oh God. We bring them to your throne of mercy that you stretch forth your hand according to your mercy. Reach and touch them, O oh God. As you touch your church, O oh God, reach and touch them, O oh God. We bring to you, O oh God, Yvonne Johnson, who is under the weather, the Spooner family, as they each endure physical challenges, and the Bennett and Hendred family, as they mourn the loss of their brother, Ronald Bennett. 
Father, we bring to you members of Springfield Garden, Elder Glinton Coleman and Brother Lennox James, both struggling with health challenges. Elder Francine Malloy and everyone who are celebrating birthdays this month. Oh God, we bring to you the family of Deacon Clifton Leonard, the Sewing Williams, and Sam Garrett family, and all the members and friends of Westminster Presbyterian Church. Oh God, we bring to you Tessie O'Neill and Deirdre Crane, the Ellison and Chile families, and the New York City Police Department. Oh God, in far away, we pray for Catherine Richardson, Clara Hunton, and the First Presbyterian Church of Far Away family. Father, we bring Sister Paulette Hyde and the family. Father, we pray for Sister Pauline Mortimer. We pray for Sister Elsa David and the Troop Memorial Presbyterian family. Father, we pray for Sister Ellen Smalls, Reverend Carol Hall, and Brother Anthony Spencer, and all the friends and family of Downton Presbyterian Church. Oh God, we pray for all essential workers and their families in Queens, New York City. We pray for the state of New York. We pray for the United States of America. And we pray, oh God, for all the world as this dangerous virus extends its wings to towards every part of this world. Father, we know that you are there in your throne and you see what is happening. Oh God, we pray for your help. We call upon your name because your word said if your people should call upon you in time of trouble, that you will answer. Oh God, we call you at this time of trouble, that you extend your hand, oh God, according to your mercy. Heal our land, oh God. Heal our land, oh God. If there's any way we have sinned against you, forgive us, have mercy, oh Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father, strengthen your church, strengthen your people, bless each and every one of us, O oh God, in our various home. Is there anyone that is sick, O oh God? Father, we pray for your healing. Is there anyone that is weak, O oh God? We pray for your strength. Is there anyone that is lacking, O oh God? According to your mercy, you provide for us in the name of Jesus. We thank you, O oh Father God. We thank you, Holy Spirit of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God's holy word comes to us from the Old Testament reading of Isaiah chapter 58, reading verses 1 and then 4 to 10. Isaiah chapter 58, reading verses 1 and then 4 to 10. Verse 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Verse 4, indeed you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is it not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out, when you see the naked that you cover him, and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. 
Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and the speaking of wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. Here ends the reading. God's holy word also comes to us from the New Testament reading of Matthew 25, verses 41 to 45. Matthew 25, verses 41 to 45. Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in, naked, and you did not clothe me, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. Here ends the reading. The Sermonic Selection, I Need You to Survive by Deacon Green and New Vision.
Today's sermon will be preached by Elder Diana Bartelt. What shall we render? Good morning, church. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to thank Reverend Davis for the privilege of speaking from this pulpit this morning and to lift up the ministers and lay leaders of the eight Presbyterian churches of Southeast Queens Collaborative that make up this collaborative. I ask God's blessing and protection for all members and friends of the congregations. Would you pray with me, please? Spirit of God, open our hearts so that we sense your presence wherever we are. Bind us together even though we are apart so that we may hear your voice and respond as one united body of Christ. Not my words, Lord, but may your message be heard. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. We have now been sheltered in place for 78 days. 78 days of people, many from this, these congregations, who have been, and communities who have been declared essential workers and being required to risk their lives to serve and save the lives of others. In those 78 days, we have sustained over 58,000 confirmed cases and over 4,000 deaths in the county of Queens alone. I could not help but think of those who have lost loved ones without a chance to, be, to say goodbye, and for those who have survived after being in a medically induced coma for weeks or maybe even a month. It brought me to mind the Psalm 16, 116, which is subtitled, Thanksgiving for Deliverance from Death. I would like to read this psalm from the King James Version. I love the Lord because he heard my voice and my supplications, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore I will call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death encompass me, and the pains of hell go hold, get hold of me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. Return unto rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with me. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. What shall I render to, to the Lord for all the benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now and in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. O Lord, truly I am your servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the Lord of the house of the Lord, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. Amen. We can all join in the question, what shall we render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards us? This is an age old question of how we can best show our gratitude to God for all that we have received. Put it another way, what can we give God in return that God would be most appropriate and pleasing to the Creator? In a worship service 
committee meeting at Hollis with the Reverend Michael Livingston, then our pastor. He said that worship service is a tautology, a phrase or expression which means the same thing twice in two different words. In other words, two sides of the same coin. He said that worship is service because, because God covets our prayers and desires that we focus fully on him when we shape our petitions. In his letter to Thessalonians, Paul writes, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ concerning you. Worship, prayer, studying the scripture are all necessary to get to know God and have a relationship with the Lord. They're necessary for the preparation to do what is for me the form of worship that God desires us to use, and that is service. Listen again to Isaiah chapter 58, verses six through eight. Is it not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share the, your food with the hungry and to provide the poor wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked to clothe them and not turn away from your own flesh and blood. Then your light will break forth like the dawn and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Amen. Then you will call and the Lord will answer you you will cry for help, and he will say, here am I. The reward for worshiping through service is that when you call on the name of the Lord, he will answer you. Amen. Again, in the off-quoted verse from Micah 6, verse 8, he has shown you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? but to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. In the last parable in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus speaks of the Son of Man as the king at the final judgment, saying he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. For those who care for the poor, the hungry, the naked, and those in prison are the righteous. Then the king will say to those on the right, come ye who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Hallelujah. We must be prepared to serve, but we cannot stop at being well prepared. It is for us to serve, to follow the one that said, I come not to be served, but to serve. If we only did the preparation and not the service, it would be like a young man practicing skills to play baseball, spending hours in the batting cage and in the field shagging fly balls, studying the rules, but then never playing the game, maybe out of a fear of failure. Michael Livingston, our pastor in 1979, his first sermon at Hollis when he was called to be our pastor in 1979, he said he was an excellent basketball player and the, and the boys loved him. He said in his message that he found himself as he was playing basketball, driving toward the basket, but then at the last second, passing the ball off to someone else to take the shot because he was afraid he would miss. He realized at some point that he had to risk taking the shot because that's the essence of the whole game, take the shot. He urged us as a congregation to take the shot. We cannot allow a spirit of fear to prevent us from stepping out on faith to serve God through service to our congregation our community, and our world. 
This COVID-19 pandemic can be a time when we can gain a new understanding of what is really important, both as individuals and as congregations. Amen. We come to reassess what things are really important. And those things which we spend so much time and resources of talent and money that do not render service to others. To use an example from this world, it has been said that if you want to know what's really important to someone, look at their bank statement. Those charges that appear are what matter to that person, and those that don't, don't. If you would look at our church budgets and compare the funds allocated for the worship service to the mission budget, if there is one, what does this say about our understanding of service as worship? As an example, what can we learn during this time of disaster and tragedy that is probably we would have had long discussions on the details celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper and what best represents the body and blood of Christ. During this time of remote worship, we have come on to understand that we have what we have in our kitchens when set aside through prayer from a common to a sacred use can be used in the sacraments as we commune together remotely. We have many clues from life in scripture and scripture as to how we can proceed as we come out of this time of tragedy. In life throughout history, there have been people who have lived a life of service, some well known, some not known. In each of our congregations, we can cite the names of those people currently serving and those lives we remember from the past. They are witnesses and remind us of how we too can live a life of service. From the scripture, these two come to mind. As his last message on earth to the disciples, Jesus gave them and us the instructions on how to best worship him in the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the urge, age. From Paul in his letter to the Hebrews, we have this. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that it so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race that is marked before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Amen. The invitational hymn will be Just As I Am by Sister Hudley Simmons and Chaplain Charles Powell.
The Invitation to Faith in Christ, Reverend Dr. Edward Davis. Hello, family. We're so happy that we can be together on this special day, Sunday the 17th of God's month. And we're here to pray at this point. We thank God for the dynamic message that came to us. And we gave God glory for what God's going to do. Not like you'll do something. If you're home alone, I want you to call a friend or a neighbor and connect them on your phone. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there. And if you have your family in the house, please call them together so we can pray together. We give God glory, praise, and honor. Let us pray. Almighty, saving, and keeping Lord, we come into your presence on this day, thanking you that you have given us another day that we can come and worship, pray, and thank you as a family. We thank you for the special angels that you've assigned to each one of us to protect us, both by day and night. Almighty Savior, the scriptures teach us, for the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We thank God for the eternal life that Jesus comes to give us. We thank the Lord God that on this Sunday, if we confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. And that's why Jesus came. Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to heal us. Jesus came to bless us. And Jesus came to make us and give us eternal life. So we thank God that we can pray on this Sunday. And if we render, if we give ourselves, our body, our soul, our mind, our everything to God, God will bless us and deliver us. If we render and surrender to God what Isaiah told us in his word, then shall your light break forth as the morning and your health shall spring forth and your righteousness shall go before us, and your glory should be our reward. In the midst of COVID-19, all around us, we know that there's trouble and stress and strain. But we know that the Lord God tells us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will help you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my salvation. Thank you, God, for holding us. Thank you, God, for uplifting us. Thank you, God, for always being with us. Thank you, God, as we render and surrender your word that instructs us to look to the hills from which cometh our help. We know, God, that all of our help comes from you. And we thank you for the help, O oh God. We thank you for your protection, Almighty God. We thank you for your salvation, Almighty God. We thank you that you said you never leave us or forsake us, Almighty God. We know, O oh God, that you are a true God and a righteous God. We thank you, God, for our angels which encamp around about us. So we come to surrender, O oh God, our, and render all to you. John 3.16, Almighty God, which we learned from a child, teaches us and assures us that almighty God, for you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son. We believe in Jesus. We will not perish, but have everlasting life. So we thank you, God, that you've come to protect and to cleanse and to help us and to lead us into everlasting life. We believe, almighty God, that you said these words and we trust your word. We thank you that we've hidden your word in our hearts, Almighty God, as we pray that we might not sin against thee. We thank you, God, that Psalms 116 teaches us, What shall I render unto the Lord for all that the benefits that he's bestowed upon me? I will take the cup of salvation, Almighty God, we pray, that we'll take the cup of salvation and call upon 
your name. And we thank you for your name. For there's power, there's healing, there's deliverance in your name, almighty God. So family members, let us thank God that we can render and surrender everything to God. Render and surrender everything to God Almighty. That our Lord, our God, amen, will be the God that will be with us. He's the God that protects us. He's the God that forgives us. He's the God that delivers us. He's the God that heals us. He's the God that cleanses us. God saves us and makes us the person he wants to be. So today, don't be afraid, don't be alone. Render and surrender everything to God that you might move into that place that God wants you to be and to fear not because God is with you. I pray, amen, that you will accept Jesus if you do not know the Lord as your Savior, that you say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I surrender. I surrender to you and come into my life. And if you know the Lord is your Savior, just thank God for his protection, our dear elders. Thank God for his protections, our younger people. Thank God for his protection, family members, that God protects us and God keeps us and God makes us and God wants us to know that he'll never leave us or forsake us. I'd like for us, amen, to come together now if your family members are there. Come together now and let us pray the Lord's prayer to, together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory, and you're everything, O oh God. So as we surrender and render everything to you, everything to you, we know that you will bless us. Help us, O oh God, to call a friend, call the neighbor, call a loved one, and just let them know that you love them, O oh God. Help us to do something during these trying times that will reach out and be a blessing to someone, Almighty God that we will surrender, knowing as we surrender, you will bless us. Thank you, God, for the wonderful words from the song, I Surrender All. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. All to Jesus I surrender, humbly at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, take us, Jesus, take us now. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior, holy thine. Fill me with thy love and power. Let thy blessings be fully falling on me. God, we surrender all to you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this time of prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our angels. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your protection. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your deliverance. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for forgiving us. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for cleansing us. We surrender all to you. And thank you for your healing. Make us a blessing to someone. Help us call someone. Help us to pray with someone. And we know, oh God, that you will never leave us or forsake us. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be a blessing to you and to others. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God loves you. God loves you. And God's with you. Fear not. Cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Amen and amen. Let us reaffirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead, 
he ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he can, shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The announcements will be made by Reverend Carol Daughtry Steptoe. Wasn't that a beautiful service? We want to continue to thank you for supporting our collaborative efforts and bringing wonderful worship services to all of our collaborative churches and friends. Continue to stay connected. Continue to support your church uh, financially as well as in prayer. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, the apostle exhorts us with these words, so let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Remember to stay connected with all the various prayer lines offered by our different ministries. And don't forget, we are having Women's Day weekend next weekend. So please remember to give your Women's Day apportionment to your prospective churches. Now, get ready because next Friday, Saturday, and finally with culminating on Sunday worship, we're gonna have a whole weekend in which we are going to worship Friday night the 22nd from seven to nine and Saturday morning from uh, nine to one and then our Sunday worship service. Stay tuned for information on how to get connected. There are gonna be wonderful preachers, wonderful activities and wonderful ways to stay engaged. We're looking forward to seeing you. Take care and remember you are blessed and highly favored. The Benediction, Elder Diana Barthelt. Receive the charge and benediction. Go out into the world in peace. Hold on to that which is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with us all, both now and forevermore. And let the people of God say, Amen. 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 Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it's now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. The postlude. Guide my feet, Lord, Sister Hudley Simmons and Chaplain Charles Powell. <laughs> 